Science won't make this any yeah. more aerodynamically efficient. We started with the math equation for efficiency. At a glance, Aptera's upcoming EV looks straight from the future. Too brash, too weird, too out there. But this design is expected to produce the lowest drag of any car ever tested. This is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. And nearly twice as efficient as the Tesla Model 3. And just like the winds that carve this landscape, the distinct lines of this EV could do the same for the automotive industry. We heavily researched what Tesla was doing right, yeah. um, and then tried to simplify it for our users. Today we'll take you behind the scenes with Aptera's co-founder and CEO to get the scoop on the world's most efficient solar electric vehicle, requiring no charging for most daily use and a range up to 1,000 miles. And even the safety of this three-wheeler will surprise you. You don't want to miss this, so let's get started. The first thing you'll notice about the vehicle is just a very unique shape. It's yeah. shaped more like a fish or a bird than a traditional automobile. Most automobiles use 60 to 70% of their fuel at highway speeds, just pushing air out of the way. So you've got basically a, a big rolling frontal area pushing down the road, and there's a high pressure area that's created in front of your nose, but there's nowhere for that high pressure to go. So in this vehicle, we have a very sharp entry to the nose, and we actually put a hump in the back of the vehicle, so it speeds up air under the belly to the tail, and it actually sucks the high pressure from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle, and it basically neutralizes the aerodynamic drag of the main body of the vehicle. Aptera offers four battery packs with supreme efficiency, with the launch model 42 kilowatt hour pack offering 400 miles of range, and 60 and 100 kilowatt hour packs with up to 1,000 miles of range. Those will be available once production scales. We have a very efficient powertrain solution. It's in the wheels. So we don't have a transaxle, we don't have a U-joint, a drive shaft, a U-joint. So you, so you clean up all those losses in your drivetrain and you get something that's a 20% more efficient drivetrain on top of a very lightweight chassis that's uber aerodynamic. And then you're able to reduce your energy usage you know, down to about a quarter of what the average yeah. EV uses. Being so efficient means that Aptera can recoup almost 200 miles of range overnight simply by plugging into a 110 outlet or the same outlet as your phone. It can also charge completely from the sun for almost all of your daily needs. The solar panels act kind of like a trickle charger. Yeah. So imagine you go home and you plug into your garage outlet, you kind of 1300 watts out of your garage outlet. This gives you about 700 watts of solar power. So when you're under the sun, you're, you're getting power, it's trickle charging the battery, and the goal is to just always keep your battery topped off. So anytime you leave, your battery's full and you can just drive as much as you want. Mm -hmm. But the actual recharge capability of the solar is about 40 miles a day in sunny San Diego, California. Okay. It's, it adds up to about 11,000 miles a year of free driving just on solar. That's in San Diego. If you're in Boston or New York or something, it's more like 8,000. Did it take you guys a long time to come up with this and actually go with something so different? Was that a hard choice? Well, it's really a solution to the math equation of what is the most efficient thing you can put on the road. Mm -hmm. And you know, now with computational fluid dynamics, and the ability to run huge simulation on Amazon web servers. You know, you're able to refine designs in a way that you couldn't do even a decade ago. And you know, this has gone through thousands and thousands of iterations in computational fluid dynamics. And basically the computer has told us, you know, this is how it should be shaped. Mm -hmm. This is a high drag area, this is a low drag area. And you keep kind of molding it until it's the perfect shape. And that's what we have here. What we feel is an evergreen design because science won't make this any yeah. more aerodynamically efficient. So, you know, flash forward 30 years from now, this will still be the most aerodynamic shape. So we hope to, you know, be able to upgrade the batteries over time. All the solar panels are replaceable. So you take them off like you would replace a windshield and you're able to upgrade those over time. The infotainment computer is upgradable. So we keep the box and the display separate so you can upgrade them over time. So we want this to be something, you know, I can pass down to my grandkids. As you might notice in this video, it was really windy and my hair was all over the place. And that brings us to today's sponsor, MD Hair. So this is kind of embarrassing to talk about, but after I had my daughter, I noticed that my hair was starting to fall out in clumps in the shower. And even a year or two later, I noticed that it was just thinner and, and getting kind of dull. So I've been using this product for a while now and I can already see like little baby hairs starting to grow back in right here. So here's what came in my completely customized kit. It had shampoo, conditioner, serum, 
serum, supplements, and marine collagen. You just take a quiz and they actually analyze your scalp using AI and track your hair growth and then customize your kit. The treatment is super moisturizing and it smells like eucalyptus and I've already noticed that my hair just feels stronger and thicker. I've even had a few people online comment about how good my hair has been looking and my husband even wants to try it now too. Luckily, I have a promo code to give him and you guys that will give you 70% off and I will link it down below in the description. But if you wanna customize your hair growth treatment with empty hair now, use my promo code KIMJ70 to get your first month of customized products at 70% off. Okay, let's get back to the video. We didn't do like a market study and you know, figure out we need to make a crossover SUV with 12 cup holders. We started with the math equation for efficiency we built this amazing looking vehicle and then we kind of put it out to the world and we said, you know, I, I hope that they love it. Yeah. And we got like 4,000 pre-orders in the first couple of weeks. Now we have 44,000 pre-orders and we have 16,000 investors and we're starting production next year and we think those numbers will explode. And from the outside, you knock on this and then it opens. Okay. Oh, there you go. There you go. We I have an RFID works. card that you can tap or your okay. phone as well but we have been playing with this knock-knock sensor. We don't know if it's gonna make it into production, but we think it'd be cool for the phone to authenticate you and then be able to come up and just knock, knock on it. Knock-knock, who's door. there? Yeah. And Aptera was also the first company to commit to using Tesla's charging standard. This is our, our beautiful Max charger right here. We, uh, we slant it to the driver's side, so the standard Tesla cable without an extension can, can still charge us. Okay. Uh, but we, uh, we, do, we don't have it mechanically driven or, or driven by a motor. You, you just pull on it, it's on a magnet, so and you don't have to wait for anything to open up. It, you just open it up by hand, try to keep and it simple. What was the charging speed on it? Uh, 50 kilowatts is what we're aiming for, okay. uh, which is great because you know, we can basically recharge our battery pack in 40, 50 minutes uh, from zero to full. Uh, but most of the time, if we're at a supercharger station, we're only gonna, we're only gonna take up the stall for 20 minutes. Get these. Technical. Yeah, it's great to have kind of over-the-air updates oh, wow. where you can This knock-knock knock feature that. is pretty cool. If that makes it in, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah, we're, we're wondering that. if we want like a touch feature where you can like, you know, rub your hand over it or if you want to knock. So we're still kind of playing with like what the real usability is, but yeah. it's just a sensor. There's already a mount there, so we just put any Let kind of sensor. Let us know in the comments want. if you like the knock-knock feature or if you like more of a touch thing. I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, it's got tons of storage in the back. It, most people see pictures and they think it's small, yeah. but it's actually as long as a Prius and it's as wide as a Tesla Model S. So it's a substantial vehicle and you can fit a couple mountain bikes back here. If you fold the seats forward, you actually have seven feet from the back of the seats to the tail. So you can camp back here, two people comfortably. We've got a dog kit that has two steps and a little pad so the dog can get in and out. It's got a, a little mesh fence so the dog doesn't, uh, so doesn't get forward in the vehicle. Underneath this. Uh, in production, we've got a bunk here, uh, but it's not in this version. Okay. So it's just 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 a flat floor in, in this version. This is actually the gamma version, which is one design cycle before our production version. Okay. So we just finished our production version last year, and we're still working on building that. We're hoping to have them built by the end of this year. Okay. Um, so my other question: What about chargers inside? Like, how, how many do you have USB Cs up front? Uh, we we'll have USB two USB Cs. Uh, and that little box right there will actually be a 110 inverter, so you can plug in 110 devices. Uh, we're still deciding if we want how many USBs we want as well. The one that I saw them last looking at was two USB A's and two USB C's, and then a 110 plug. Okay. So that was a 600 watt inverter, so you can you know you can run most stuff, charge your laptop. Okay, but there's no like sub trunk because where no, would they're be? in in production in behind the rear tire. Yeah. There's a drop down box, but it's really big enough for like a charge cable with okay. the charge box on it. So the, this is crazy. So the wheels are in, in the tires are in here and they have yep. their own motors. Yep. The motors are in the wheels. Yep. Within the wheels. How would you change a tire? Like, do you need to take this off? You take this off and there's a front replaceable piece too. So these will actually be kind of latched and magneted on. So you can just pull them off. Um, so you pull these off and then there's two uh, connectors for each of these and then you take okay. the wheel pant off. So it is, it is a procedure, but we're hoping okay. that rear wheel can come off in two minutes and we're hoping that you can get to the front wheels in less than a minute. Okay. I love the lights. Is there any kind of front trunk? No front trunk. Uh, we kind of pack all of the electronics in the front and the battery okay. pack is under your seats and the battery packs pushed as far forward as possible. We try to keep 
65% front weight bias. Okay. So because of because it's three wheels, you want front weight bias, and it handles you know very well uh, in that configuration. But but no front trunk. There is a little space under there, but it's not enough to be useful. How has the process been with regulators to make these street legal? You know, you can barely see the tires on the grass here. Yeah. And when you're rolling on blacktop, if it's like a freshly blacktop road or something that's reasonably black, you know, if you've never seen this, you think it's floating. Mm -hmm. So we get lots of comments on, oh, is it a spaceship? You know, how is it floating? That sort of stuff. But from a regulatory point of view, we're an auto cycle or a motorcycle. Okay. So we were held to that regulatory regime. You, know, you could buy this vehicle today because Aptera is a, a federal motor vehicle manufacturer. You could take it to Progressive tomorrow. You could get it insured. You could be driving your Aptera the next day. Um, you know, so we don't have a lot of regulatory hurdles that maybe other EV startups have had that had four wheels because mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of kind of third party okay. uh, sign off to get the vehicle um, on the roads. Because this is a motorcycle, you know, it's a, a different regulatory regime and we're already certified to sell them. Yeah. So there's no kind of there's no kind of roadblocks for us to get them to market. With that, um, how, what's the safety with these? Yeah, this is designed more like a Formula One car or a Cirrus aircraft yeah. than a traditional automobile, which is which is a plus in many, many ways. Uh, there's, a, there's a carbon fiber safety cell that goes across the roofs and the passengers. Uh, when we last tested the roof crush structure on this, we had the highest roof crush strength of any passenger car on the road. We also have 750 millimeters of crushable space in the nose of our vehicle. To get a five-star crash rating in the U.S., you need 650 millimeters. And we have this really big boxed out section uh, through the door um, and the lower part of the door seal here that protects your hip point. Most side injuries come right at your hip point. So the more you can protect that hemp point, the better you are in side, uh, side impact. So we've been able to design things in this more like a Formula One car, you know, built very specifically for safety of the occupants than, you know, I think really any other automobile company has been able to do. And we hope that we can show that to people over time because we wanted not to just make a, a safe vehicle. We want to make the safest thing we can put on the road. You know, I want my mom to drive this. I want, you know, be able to take the kids around in this. I want it to be as safe as possible. And we can do that with composites in a way that you can't do with steel or aluminum. You're also able to insure this as a motorcycle, not okay. a car. So the insurance that I found is about half the cost of what you'd insure a regular vehicle at. So you're able to save money on insurance. You don't have to pay the electric bill to charge your electric vehicle anymore. And you know, for, for the launch edition price of around 33.5, you know, it's a pretty good deal to get 400 yeah. miles range. Very cool. The easiest way to get in is to set your butt in first and then swing your legs in. Okay. Because you have kind of a door of your head. So yes, this is so cool. Different. I love this. All right. Okay. We have a yoke steering wheel because we have a rear vision system that shows you kind of a 180 degree picture of what's going on beside and behind the vehicle right in front of the wheel. So when you're driving, we want you to keep your eyes on the road, but also have a sight picture of what's going on behind you without having to look side to side or look behind or look up. So we think this vision system will really help people get better situational awareness, a strap or anything and just pull it down slowly. All right. Here we go. All Here right. Go. So is this all functional right now? Yeah. So the UI is made, you know, to be very comfortable, but you know, I have a, a Model S and now I have a Model Y. So to say that, you know, our center screen is not influenced by Tesla's is probably a misnomer. We heavily researched what Tesla was doing right yeah. um, and then tried to simplify it uh, for our users uh, in this. So we try to keep, um, you know, a lot of the things on the screen. So, you know, we're able to, to do the window controls, we're able to turn on the lights. We try to keep everything on here so we have a lighter wiring harness. A uh, typical electric vehicle has a wiring harness that's kind of 90 pounds. We have a wiring harness that's only 30 pounds. And we're able to do that with distributed I.O. controllers, little control boards. We put them in the door, the dash, the rear to control the tail lights, you know, over by the HVAC system to control the vents and stuff like that. And then we only have to run a power, ground, and communication wire to those little control boards and they can do anything we want them to do. Okay. Um, that one replaces a lot of connectors in the vehicle. So um, a lot of um, the faults in new vehicles are the electrical connectors uh, because it's hard to get them right. <laughs> Uh, classic, um, you know, faults of, of motorcycle programs is, is the electrical connector. So we wanted to get rid of every connector we could to simplify the wiring harness as much as possible. Another consequence of that is things become really lightweight, uh, which is nice. This, what is this uh, This material? is pineapple leather. 
Uh, this is actually an early version of our center console, but it shows you an idea of the modularity. What we've done is we have kind of a center tunnel that you're able to attach different devices to. Launch edition will come with kind of an orange accent uh, interior. Uh, then we have a blue accent and a gray accent interior. Uh, but the first four to 5,000 vehicles we build will build with that, uh, that orange accent interior. And then after that, we'll let people have options on which color they want. Uh, the exterior of the vehicle, the launch edition, is going to be a silver uh, gray. Uh, it's called Luna. Uh, we also have a vehicle called Soul, which is white. And then we have a Noir, which is a black wrapped vehicle. But we don't paint our vehicles. They're all wrapped with vinyl wrap. So the gray parts are what yeah. we covered. So, so you'll get a, you'll get a, a film kit. None of, the, none of the film is wider than 30 inches, okay. so you can get them kind of cut anywhere. But there'll be an, an inner and outer wheel kit and then a sticker here and a sticker on the door. And we hope that people will try to apply them themselves or just go to a local wrap shop. So who is the ideal driver for this? Who out there needs this right now? Um, you know, we, we started with the math equation to solve for efficiency and then we just kind of put the vehicle out there. So we have data for who has reserved the vehicle now, uh, but we didn't really aspire to like, you know, attack any specific okay. community. But, you know, the, the people that have pre-orders, um, you know, currently they skew male, they skew older, they skew higher income. But I think that's largely because the press coverage that we've gotten so far is really tech heavy. Yeah. And most of those are, are male viewers. Now that we're getting a little more general press, we see it skewing a good bit younger, more female. Um, so, you know, I think that anybody that's concerned with their environmental footprint, mm -hmm. uh, concerned with the amount of energy they use, um, you know, we get a lot of like pilots and engineers because they just look at this and they're like, this, this is bleeding edge technology. It really uh, is. I want bleeding edge technology. So, you know, it's built like a Formula One car and this, you know, carbon fiber chassis and aerodynamic goodness. So I think a lot of people will be inspired just because it's engineering, it's aerospacey, yeah. it's super tech. I think, you know, there'll be the other people that are inspired by the environmental aspects of it. Um, and then there'll be people that will just love it because it's the most unique thing that you can get. Long term, Aptera's biggest win could be in the private sector. Are there any plans for the future to make like a larger version with more seats inside of it for families? Yeah, this is just the beginning, but we think that aerodynamics, lightweight, efficient powertrain is really extensible to almost any vehicle platform. So uh, we have ambitions to move from this into a more utilitarian version of the three-wheeler, so something that can deliver packages, something that can um, you know, be more commercially viable. And we think that actually the commercial segment for us will probably be more popular than the consumer segment because consumers aren't really um, as concerned about the variable cost of fuel. So if gasoline goes up a dollar, you know, people aren't as concerned if electricity costs a little more, but fleets are way concerned with how much energy yeah. uh, they're using. Uh, and now with ESG concerns and fleets wanting to be more green, they're all trying to shift to electric vehicles. But now if you buy a thousand electric vehicles, traditional electric vehicles, trucks or SUVs or whatever, you also have to adopt the charging infrastructure for those. So if you want a thousand vehicles on one piece of property, Oftentimes the utility will tell you we can't provide that much power to charge all those, all those EVs. But with a solar powered electric vehicle, yeah. you can adopt a thousand Apteras, you can park them in your parking lot and they charge from the sun. Yeah. And even if you needed to charge them a little, you could have one segment of your fleet area to charge with just 110 volts and you'd be able to get over 200 miles overnight into mm -hmm. these vehicles for the next day's use. So, you know, for the commercial applications, we think we're just going to knock it out of the park. That's kind of our long term promise is, you know, build 40 or 50,000 of these things a year for the consumer market and build 100,000 a year for the commercial market. Is this more of a one pedal? Does this have regen? What's it that does, like yeah. for driving this? It's got really good regenerative braking because the motor has a much bigger diameter than a typical electric motor. So you get really good regen braking and one pedal driving is just great in this. Um, and you have really good stability control because it's kind of like a, a servo motor in a CNC machine. You know where the motor yeah. is in almost any position. So within, you know, kind of a 30 seconds of a turn, you can adapt to wheel slip and understeer and oversteer and stuff. So stability control and tank turns and stuff in this is going to be you know, pretty phenomenal. Oh, wow. So we'll do tank turns? Yeah, you skip the rear wheel and you just pull the front oh, two wow. wheels around and spin it like a top. Is there wheel. opportunity to add so more solar onto it? To yeah, we have, a, we have a camping kit now where you can raise the rear hatch and you put a tent over it. And our solar charge controller is actually extensible. So you can actually have some, some camping add-ons and add on another 500 or 1,000 watts of power to your system. So that'll allow you to put more charge into your battery pack. But this is, this is really the first adventure vehicle where you can create your own energy when you're out adventuring. 
Yeah. Imagine driving to your favorite camping spot that's 200 miles away. You camp for a week. You actually come home with more energy in your car than you left with. You can also use that energy for like a cooktop. You can mm -hmm. charge your laptop. You can run the air conditioning inside if you want to camp inside and be cooler. Like there's a lot of things you can do with you know energy like that that really just hasn't been available to any other EV or yeah. any other combustion vehicle ever created. Are we able to take it for a spin at all? Uh, I don't. I think they've already set up, so I don't know that they have it set up for us to drive right okay. now. We uh, our crew already left. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you got to ask, right? Yeah. Don't ask, don't get. But we'd love for you to come to San Diego and visit I the factory. Love to. We'll have our validation vehicles, you know, closer to the end of this year. And I want to know your guys' questions, what you want to know, what you want to see. I will definitely be making more videos with Aptera for sure. And thank you guys for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll catch you next time. Oh, yes. There we go. Cheers. <laughs> We live in Georgia and people go up into the Blue Ridge Mountains and we see people that rent like slingshots and yeah. kind of drive through the mountains. I could see, you know, people owning a fleet of these, renting them out for people just to try out up there where it's like these gorgeous views. Obviously you have that in California as well, but um, I could definitely see that just, you know, because they're so unique right now, but I'm curious like 20 years from now, will this be like the body shape? that we'll be seeing more and more. Yeah, we, we hope it's like the classic VW Beetle where, you know, they really set a new trend in automotive yeah. and there were people that were super passionate about the idea of fuel efficiency back then and it was okay that it was in a unique shape. They kind of just did what they could with it and you had this whole world of accessories for the VW Bug. And we hope that, you know, this becomes kind of that same iconic symbol for freedom where you don't have to worry about charging it. You can go kind of as far as you want, whenever you want. Uh, the battery pack has thermal management. So the typical things of, oh, we got to heat the battery pack up or cool the battery pack down, that, that's taken with the thermal management of the battery okay. pack. Uh, we haven't done a lot of cold weather testing yet, but this winter, um, our motor, the, we co-designed the motor with a company called Alafe in Slovenia. They have a cold weather test track there, so we'll be able to do testing there. And in the summer, we have plenty of yeah. places within three hours of here mm -hmm. that are scorching hot, as scorching hot as anywhere you want to be. So uh, we'll be able to test, you know, through the summer and into next summer, uh, which hopefully we'll be delivering vehicles next year. So we kind of have, you know, another, another nine months to go through all of our validation and testing. Uh, to get the vehicles ready for consumers. And you guys were one of the first to go with the NACS charger. We started a petition because we thought the Tesla NAX standard was the best standard, the best engineering in the world, and no one else was seeing it. And we were saying, regulators, wake up. You're about to pour billions of dollars into charging infrastructures, and you're going to do it with a silly CCS2 charger? Like, come mm -hmm. on. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Elon, yeah. Elon's licked it. Like, just Elon says it's available. Just use it. So we had 42,000 people sign our petition, and we think that you know that was the nudge that the world needed to realize, like, okay, this this is really better, you know, and got people talking, and and now we're able to use it, and other companies yeah, are able to use everybody it. Everybody else and, is like every week a new company we hear about is is using it. Are there any driver assist features? When you back up, there's the rear reversing lines, and we're hoping to have automatic emergency braking and lane keep. Uh, but we don't know how quickly we'll be able to launch that. It may come with a launch edition or maybe a delayed feature. Okay. And that gives us a vehicle that's about 350 miles per gallon equivalent. For people familiar with EV vernacular, it burns about 100 watt hours per mile. Uh, that means you can have a battery pack that's a quarter of what most other EVs use. It means you can ship something that's more affordable. It means you can take less from the planet and the product that you make for your transportation. And in general, just use less energy for your transportation every day. And if you put your shoulder over here, then your partner could be on the other side, your dog could be in the middle, everybody's happy. I like this, I can stargaze too. This is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. So I fit perfectly well, I'm 5'5", five five. Um, especially when you put the seats forward like that, there's plenty of room. So in production, we actually took the hatch all the way back and the tail is actually four inches longer. So we have four inches of extra space, and this is kind of easier to get in and out of because the hatch closes all the way over the back. Okay. So we made that so you could get stuff in and out easier. So if you're like hauling construction stuff. Or it's crazy stuff. to hear you talking about hauling construction stuff because I'm like, is that what we're going to be oh, using this for? There's tons of people that want to make this a utility vehicle. And they're like, that's tons of space. You know, I'm a painter or I'm an artist or I'm a musician. Like, you know, this is everything I've ever wanted. You know, it's a vehicle that I don't have to pay for fuel for. Yeah. And it's the best for the environment. Like, if I can fit my stuff in here, it's perfect. I, I assume a lot of people will maybe have something for the hatch to go like that so you yeah. can have extra storage in the back you know and it still holds on like you could make this 
very, very useful in a lot of situations. That is so crazy because you look at it and it's like so futuristic. So you have to really think outside the box of like what you're going to use this for. In my head, I guess I'm like thinking about movies. I see like flying like police cars driving around, we're like in the chasing Star Trek people. Reboot. We're about yeah. to be in another futuristic movie soon, and we're about to be on the movie set next week of another really cool movie. Oh, wow. I can't talk about what movies they are, but you know. NDAs. Those damn. Yeah, we were in an episode of The Family Guy. That was oh, cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Very, very cool. Wow, I can't wait to see what the future brings. This makes me excited. When I see stuff like this that's so innovative, so different right now, it makes me really excited about the future of EVs. To we see have this all the technology. Out. We just got to put the engineering to good use, and here you go. Well, I know I have a friend that is a reservation holder in Georgia, and he's super jealous. He's already been texting me when I told him I was here, and he wants his car first. So I'm going to see what we can do. Tell him road trip it out to San Diego, and then he can just drive it home. Okay. I will, I will let him know.